Uh, hey, good morning, everybody. I see some people popping in. What's up? This is our Texas blob here. Let me click on the old camera. There we go. We are live. It's got people. What's up, Don? What's up, Coneheads? Yep. Drunk Donkey Nation. What's up, Linda from Tallahassee? If we got any uh, Texas fans, we're, we're going to show the Texas blob. This blob's for you. <laughs> That's a big old Texas blob. You guys in Texas. So we got to talk about the dust coming. Uh, so you got a big Texas blob today. And then we got this big dust plume coming. Um, come here, buddy. I can't get Louie to show up. So, but here's Hunter. Hunter knows the deal. He had his little paws on my leg. So we'll, we'll give Louie his air time here in a minute. He's playing with Sarah, but there's Hunter, buddy. Here's our little, our little guy. Saying hi to everybody. Say, hey guys, what's up? <laughs> what's up, Texas? I got some Texas people. What's up there, Megan, Bridge City, Texas? Do, 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 do. <laughs> All right, there's Hunter. All right, cool. So, good morning. All right, so first and foremost, since we have a dog, I, I'm going to show some cool stuff that got mailed to me here from uh, Jerry Creations. I'm going to post it later but check it out and Becky sent some custom made collars for the dogs look at these guys I just opened them this morning so I'm gonna put them on later so look at those things so we'll put them on the dogs and we'll show everybody they have removable bows <laughs> so so we got a little one for Hunter and a big one for Louie so that's awesome. Thank you. I'm going to show it. I got a custom leash that goes with it. It's all custom, man. It's cool. So I'll, I'll show it tomorrow with the, with the dog. So I just wanted to tease everybody with that. So so I'll put her link and uh, we'll show them off with the dog. So thank you for, for doing that. Oh, here comes Louie. I hear him now. Come here, buddy. All right, we'll show Louie real quick. And then we'll, uh, we'll talk weather. Come here, buddy. Because everybody loves their Louie in the morning. Here's Louie in the morning. There we go. All right. So there's the original. Hey, we got somebody from some uh, Virgin Islands. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna or uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about the dust. So there's our boy. All right, we got a little bit of weather to talk about. Tropics are quiet, and uh, so here we go. We'll try to I'll try to read the comments if we got anybody new. We got some people from Puerto Rico. Hey Jennifer. Um. There's Hurricane Louie. All the coneheads. Say hi, coneheads. <laughs> Hey, Lareda, what's up? Houston, Texas. All right, so let's talk some weather, and I'll try to read the comments. Uh, we got rain. Yep, sir. So we had some big storms on the other coast. So first and foremost, got to thank our Facebook Live sponsor, ABC. I always look for a cool picture. This is a cool picture. Wicked Dolphin Coconut Rum. So, so big thanks to ABC Fine Wine and Spirits. They sponsor... Mike's weather page on Facebook Live. So we love them to death. And uh, they got some cool pictures. And that's a great picture. Look at that wicked dolphin. So check it out. Too early for that. <laughs> for sure. For sure. All right. So here's the tropics. Let's talk weather real quick. And then we'll ramble on about other things. Um, here's, I was surprised yesterday, actually, that this thing got uh, highlighted from the NHC. We were on, on our way for. Father's Day and uh, my mom's birthday dinner and uh, five o'clock they designated this subtropical depression. Hey Katie, um, Troy, it is too early when you had as many as, as I did last night. <laughs> we we had a big birthday dinner, at Cody. So, uh, but anyway, I, I was surprised this was designated. Hopefully, it doesn't take the name Dolly. I'll be very, 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 very sad because I was looking forward to Dolly and. Um, Talking about her blobs, <laughs> her big blobs. So anyway, this is uh, this is all we got to talk about in the tropics right now. This was actually left over from our big upper level low. Remember all those cool uh, water vapor loop maps that we saw um, over the uh, eastern U.S. there all last week? That was that upper level low that actually had a little spinach to it. And uh, it actually came over the Atlantic and uh, yeah, last couple days, and um, 
the NHC saw, saw enough lower level winds to designate it. So it's tropical subtropical depression. So let's see if there's any lower level winds and hopefully it'll disappear and we can save Dolly for a rainy day. Here's the lower level wind spinning out there. You can see it clear, clear as day. Yes, Brandon um, had a lot of people submit uh, videos on that. So, all right, let's talk about everything. There's uh, so there's subtropical, subtropical depression four. No biggie. Um, might clip the uh, Newfoundland, the new newfound land. <laughs> so the big story. Let's talk short term real quick. I right, said so really. All right. So tropics wise, at this point, there's really not a lot. I still we talked about it yesterday. We got a couple little things. Uh, we got tropical wave maybe curving up into lower Texas later in the week. Uh, nothing tropical out of that, but that rain's still showing up. Toward the end of the month, early July, we're starting to see more signs of lowering pressures and moisture coming across uh, the Atlantic. So again, I still think we're in a lull for another week. Uh, like I said, don't you know things could pop up, but the overall conditions are not very favorable right now. And and of course, when you look at the Pacific, look at this. You talk about something on fire. Look at the Pacific. Four spots to watch. Four areas in the Pacific. 70%, 50%, 80%, 30%. So usually when it's that active in the Pacific, it's it's dead in the Atlantic. And that is pretty serious activity. And it's kind of normal. So we got the big dust plume we're going to talk about. Um, this was shared to me from a fan. Let's take a look at this real quick. Um, so we'll talk about the, the we got dust and blobs. Hey, <laughs> John, we, we're, we're a dating site. <laughs> if I ever get a divorce, I'll be going to our chat rooms. This is like AOL. Remember the old AOL chat rooms? I used to hang out in them, man. I was an AOL stud. <laughs> True story. I found my wife, uh, me and Julie met on an AOL personal ad back in the day. It was the thing, man. <laughs> so, all right, let's talk about the Texas blob real quick. All right, so here's this kind of popped out of nowhere. Let's talk about the Texas blob because we do have flooding risk today, too. I need to point out. So, I just saw this the next couple days. Look at this. So this is the flood potential map. So everybody in Houston and those areas were hoping for rain. This blob kind of came out of nowhere, right? And uh, bam. So we're going to have a, a blob today. Later in the week, uh, coming up from the south for southern tip of Texas. But here's your flood potential map today. And it, it extends tomorrow, too. Look at that. So we've got two days. We have this front coming down tomorrow. So that's the flood map for today and tomorrow. Day three goes away. Now, there's our day three. This is that southern tip of Texas rains we've been talking about Thursday, Friday-ish. So Texas is going to have a little action. And then Friday, guess what? The dust comes. So this thing's pretty heavy-duty looking. Let's look at uh, some radar on that, and we'll, we'll see where it's going real quick on the Texas blob. A lot of lightning. I've had a bunch of people chime in and said that they had... Um, like a little mini hurricane this morning. So there's that. Let's take a look at visible satellite. This is on weathernerds.org. See what the sunshine looks like. There's it's slowly starting to see sunshine, but it actually looks like a little mini hurricane. I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? Look at I mean, this is like crazy that we have this banding. It's 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 not a land cane, but uh it's very crazy how this thing popped up overnight. And, uh, you know, it's just a blob, but definitely windy. <laughs> there's there's uh, been a lot of reports of some damage with the winds from this thing. We'll take a look at the current wind maps to kind of get an idea if we see if we got anybody. See where it's at. There's really nothing here showing. These are kind of hard. Well, there's a spike, though. That was pretty big. Where to go? San Marcos. You can see we had some big gusts here. It must be happening right now over... San Marcos, Texas, sustained winds of 21 currently. we we'll take a look at radar. See what's cooking on that. Uh, oh, great. Radar is not found. 
Got to find a new radar link. Man, they're taking away the zoomable radar. So here's current radar um, going into Austin. So that, that, you know, that's pretty hefty stuff. San Antonio getting a hit pretty hard right now. So anybody in Austin, San Antonio is getting to get get a uh, get a little wet. Del Rio, kind of like a little bow echo, right? So that's that, and what we're looking at for the rest of the day here, we can take a look at uh, future radar. This thing's going to slowly go south and um, east here. So I, will, I actually wanted to show, um, we'll just look at all the radar, and then we'll look at more zoomed in. So here's the next 16 hours. Take a look. This is a weather nerd site. We love it. Um, here's our blob making its way south. It's going to actually fall apart a little bit, but we got more energy coming up overnight through the day to day I guess it can hang on so we're gonna say you know we're gonna have a secondary blob tonight this is tomorrow so that's why we have a flood chance tomorrow for more eastern Texas so you know here's here's the rest of today this thing's gonna slowly dissipate a little bit but then we have tomorrow action starting out here in the Gulf again for Louisiana and uh, this is that front tomorrow draping front and tomorrow we're going to have another round of rains going into Texas tomorrow. And tomorrow's storm threat map here shows that increased chance for squall lines tomorrow as we get our front that's going to be draped over the south and east tomorrow. So, what's up, Marcia? Florida East Coast threats? I don't see anything yet. Um, yeah. North, North, uh, Louisiana going to get it again. This is tomorrow. So um, let's talk a lot about the dust. I just wanted to get a, I like to get a general feel of what's going on weather-wise. Here's our front tomorrow. We're going to stall out and uh, increase storms tomorrow and then back to Texas again. So we have high pressure building in. That's still the same storyline. Um, so tomorrow our front is going to drape across the south and uh, create some storm chances but then we have high pressure build in and that's going to create some pretty hot temperatures for the southeast over the weekend um, so there's a high pressure gets locked in over the southeast for the next several days so that's going to lower rain chances so all right there's that everybody's asking about rains well let's see uh normal florida stuff you know yesterday we had some big boomers let me show you we had a bunch of people uh chiming in yesterday uh last night storms over in um I have a lot of dust pictures actually check this out uh, we have ann anna here posted over st thomas virgin islands shared to our page an hour ago this is video of the dust over at the u.s virgin islands and it's incredible how thick it actually makes the sun disappear um, and that is coming so we're going to show that but this is shared thank you Ann. we had this i shared earlier from jose down there some pictures this was some of the lightning from coco last night shared from tony michelle it was intense on the east coast of florida so those kind of popcorn storms we're going to have. So let's, I mean, let's look real quick and then we'll talk about the dust. But I mean, the next, you know, we're just back, we're in the summertime now. So there's going to always be that chance for these little popcorn storms to pop up. Um, today's flow a little less than yesterday. Here's that flow again throughout the day. So five o'clock tonight, you know, we're just going to have the normal popcorn storms. Five o'clock tonight, they're going to, you know, noontime pretty clear. So they're going to start, and they're going to they're going to go uh, west to east, and uh, so you know they, they can anytime, any place, same thing. You know it's going to be so hot out that, that uh, coverage definitely highlighting more of the central eastern parts of Florida today, and then uh, we can go to overall. Let's take a look here. And uh, then we'll get going on the dust. So severe threat to Beaumont, Texas. Well, right now there's no severe threat. Actually, um, heat index is hot. Man. Let's look at this real quick. 
definitely uh, going to be in the hundreds, possibly for North Florida, Southern Georgia. But the severe threat today is is uh, not really. I mean, we got a little bit. Well, they did up to up it a little bit, so that's that's good. I'm glad because earlier it wasn't showing anything. So this storm uh, definitely something to watch here throughout the day. So this is update. That's good. So there's our storm threat today, and uh, mainly no tornado threat, mainly wind and hail. So there you go. There's the storm threat today. Um, that's all because of that big old. Start to see it here on infrared radar. This is going to make its way a little bit more. It's going to slowly dissipate, but then we're going to have a secondary one tomorrow form almost in the same spot. So this this is going to be the pattern in the next two days for Texas. Um, we're going to have a secondary line tomorrow, almost the same time, same place uh, develop for for you guys. So you know, HRR is showing it weaken out by tonight, but then we got the secondary one coming tomorrow. It's actually got a little low, low pressure spin to it. Actually, you can see that right here. Actually, we're, they're showing low pressure um, on the surface chart. Surface analysis. Let's see where that's at. And a little bit, maybe coming down. There's a high. So, um, so yeah. So yeah, we got we got uh, Gulf moisture. It's all because of this front. So anyway, there's that tomorrow. Tomorrow action. Um, skies are juicy. Somebody joked earlier we got the uh, Texas blob meet, meets the African dust. <laughs> Here's some of that tropical moisture pulling up into uh, Texas here. So later in the week here, we're going to start seeing this moisture make its way around uh, into Texas later in the week. Um, so the rain chances are definitely up. The euro is not showing those crazy totals that it did. The other day, last week we were showing this, how uh, they backed down a little bit, so that's good, but still coming up from the south uh, Thursday. And you can see that moisture, it's still showing up pretty heavy. So this this is, uh, so, so Texas gets it three ways. <laughs> Texas, you're getting the big blob today, you're gonna get a secondary blob tomorrow, and then Thursday, you're going to get tropical moisture pulled up from the south. We've been talking about a lot. There it is. And then on Friday and Saturday, you're going to get the dust. <laughs> so you're getting it all. Um, we'll look at a few more maps here with Texas stuff here. And we'll get, get going on the dust. So here's tomorrow. So that, that blob tomorrow will be a little farther to the south. But then here's the... Uh, the big stuff coming up so it's still still back to predicting some pretty heavy rains look at that this is a uh, friday so thursday friday that this tropical juice down here still coming up southern tip of texas we talked about that last week and the euro backed off a little bit but now it's back on it again here's the uh the latest thinking so it's this is through the week you know early part of the weekend we could you know, here's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So some pretty good totals possible again. So that, that's, that's been on point for a while. And that's tropical inner, that's a tropical wave basically that, um, came around the, uh, this high pressure that we got. And, um, so there you go. Let me, let me just a couple, couple more things here. We'll look at. Um, yep, yeah, sending you guys do do it bigger in Texas. So yeah, Murta, you're getting uh, all you miss the puppies. Ah, <laughs> they're sleeping on each other. Maybe I'll whip, whip them up here in a second. Um, so let's take a look here at this tropical wave that is getting pulled around in Texas this weekend. So here's kind of a look, long range. So here. Here, here is everything in a nutshell. So Thursday, we're going to have a high pressure building in over the south. And this, this is that tropical moisture coming up, kind of crossing over even a little bit from the Pacific and getting pulled up into Texas. So there's your, there's your tropical. Anything red is uh, precipital water. So that's your moisture in the air. And then as we were showing, long range looking into the tropics, uh, this, this 
general waves start to come towards lesser Antilles toward the end of the month. And we're, we're starting to see more and more signs first part of July that we could get a little, you know, a little more chance for tropical action as uh, these waves start to make their way more into the Eastern Caribbean. Um, so that, you know, again, we're, that's, that's really the next area I could see watching uh, the end of the June into early July as far as um, moisture goes because again we're in a negative MJO and uh, this is tropical tidbits here we're looking at but you can see this general these waves here toward the end of the month um, right here just that general area is just showing you you know we're starting to get lowering pressures and you know there's always that possibility that something could develop so again first part of July nothing's showing up to worry about just that's the general pattern that that I'm seeing is when we can start seeing more more chance for stuff to pop. Here's the euro, same thing. Um, show, showing the tropical juice here into Ju June here, June 29th, and then first part of July. So, yeah, you know. And then CMC kind of doing the same thing. So, All right, let me show you the dust map real quick, and then I'll sip coffee and wake up. <laughs> Um, July 7th, who's that? July 6th, Storm in the Gulf. No, not, not, nothing to worry about yet. <laughs> um, let's take a look. Well, since we're here, I want to look at the long range ensembles here. Not really showing anything on the Euro. So that's good. No big highlighted areas yet. On the euro for uh, long long range development that's always good um another site i look at here I haven't looked this in a while but we could look at combined ensemble maps here with um areas this area always pops up this whole area this time of year is sometimes it tricks the models but you know we do have a little bit of possibility i guess but Nothing, though. Nothing to worry about. All right. So, July 6th, Whitney, let's see. Let's see what they show. July 6th. I guess that's 10 days out, right? We're technically 10 days out. So, where are you seeing? I know the Euro is showing it. But general low pressure probably in the Gulf. A little something, something down here. One of these waves starts to pull up. So, you know, that, that, that makes sense. There's a little more activity. So, yeah, I mean, there's July 4th. Ge you know, generally, it's all coming from the same area here. So, you know, into, into June right here, we're going to start to see some waves. That's, that's I, you know, I think that's where we'll start to see um, chances for one of these waves sticking. Climatology speaking is exactly, you know, the end of June, uh, early July. <clears throat> that's where we see development. Um Here's uh, all the storms that have ever happened. So all the storms that ever happened. All right, so this is the this is the week we're in right now, June 21st to the 30th. This is all the storms that have happened in 150 years plus. But you can see only one Lone Ranger, and it was a low rider <clears throat> that intertropics convergence zone is low this time of year. So that's hard. You know, anything below 10 degrees is, is rare. Usually storms like to be around 10, 15 degrees when they are line moves north um, but this you know one lone ranger 150 years but most of your activity this time starts about right here then you go to next week in the first part of july and we start to see more and more first part of july so that's you know typically that's what we see you know the tropics move out a little bit more to the west or east So there's that. All right, let's look at the dust map, the dust and the wind. All right, so all those pictures we've been showing on Twitter and stuff. Let me close some stuff down. Um, is incredible. So the dust is normal. You've got mail. I got mail. <laughs> the dust is nor normal. It's the uh, the thickness of the this dust has definitely 
been the talk of the town. Um, the heaviest stuff right now is over Puerto Rico. Obviously, that if you're just joining, uh, Jose here, one of our fans, I shared it, but we'll show it again. Um, shared some incredible pictures from Puerto Rico this morning. And we'll let's take a look at that real quick here again. So here's Jose's pictures. Um, thanks for sharing to the page. But look at that. That's current picture. And, there, and there's a good satellite shot showing showing the dust where we're at right now. So th this is all making its way to Texas and the lower Gulf this weekend. And I'm going to show you the maps here. Um, if I can find it. There it is. All right. So. So here it is now. This is the animated from NASA. It's awesome. Um, they show this big, heavy plume. Obviously, the thicker the dust is the yellows and whites, but it's going to be making its way, unfortunately, through, through Jamaica um, the 24th, tomorrow, Cuba, and a you know, DR Haiti, the heavy stuff. But it's actually going to make the Yucatan Friday, 25th, or it's Thursday. And then it's going to circle its way up into Texas starting Friday, the 26th. So the heavy stuff, look at that, it's coming. The he, some of this, so some of these pictures that you're seeing out of Puerto Rico and stuff right now, that it's the same concentration. It's not losing much. You know, we got a secondary plume coming behind it. No, nothing like this one. So going Friday here, there's the thickness across the Yucatan all the way up into Texas. And then it actually is going to make its way into Louisiana northward on the weekend. So the 27th, that's Saturday, I believe. That's Saturday. So Saturday, we're going to see this plume of dust uh, into Texas, Louisiana. And then it's actually going to go northward. Look at that. So it's going to, you're, we're going to see those same pictures of the thick, hazy skies this weekend in Texas and it does cause respiratory issues people that have um, asthma so it's uh, it's definitely not fun for those let's um, zoom in a little closer to home here yeah Betty it, it, you're gonna definitely see it it's, it's gonna clip um, holy cow it's gonna clip clip key, the keys for sure um, Let's see what we can get a little more closer here. People at home want to see. Oh, can I even go south? Let me see if I can go farther south. This is, they just added this to my, this is a paid site weather models. So I'm very happy that they added the animated um, dust maps. So that's pretty cool. So now we have to find it. So it's NASA dust. So there's US. I don't know if we can zoom in to lower US. Nope. So there's there's us hi so we'll take a look at a little more closer here so yes there is a chance betty that we could see the see it actually impact the keys here t tomorrow so there, it's in the middle atmosphere and then going into friday thursday friday we're going to start to see it so that definitely lower floor is going to feel it not not like a big direct hit but uh, we're going to see definitely the haziness in the Houston, in the Louisiana. So, Whitney, take pictures. <laughs> um, oh, interesting. Yeah, who brought that up? Casper. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're right. Creates a lot of instability, and uh, we could get some increased storm, storm coverage. On that, so here you go. Here's the dust. So it stops out here on Saturday, but there you go. So that's that'll be the storyline, you know. So th this right here is the 27th, early June here. That would be sad. so. This is overnight. So Friday night, definitely, it's going to be impacting the, the coastal, and then Saturday morning. So prepare. <laughs> the the tack of the dust. <laughs> All right, so there's that. Let's take a look. A couple more things. Um, here's I got all kinds of maps on the dust here. You know, there's the current satellite. That one's not actually even that good. I like I like I like this one here. This is a good one. This is live goes look at the satellite. You can see it right here. So that's you know, and it chokes hurricanes. Hey Aaron, what's up? 
Thank you, Mike. <laughs> uh, we're all right. Hey, we did do ge we did do ge we did do geography the other day, but I want to see where Cove, Texas is. Because we always look at stuff, so we'll see where Mike's at. <laughs> so, we'll just zoom out. Near Ho it's near near Houston, so you got rain coming. You got. Two days of rains coming to Houston. I think that was cool. So anyway, um, so really, well, Casper brought up a good point. The dusk, uh, and we had that article, Casper. I'm sure you read, but could increase lightning on the edges. Uh, but over for hurricanes, it's fascinating because it helps dry the atmosphere. Um, it actually lowers humidity it's it's dust it, and it de it definitely dries the middle atmosphere you need to have good moisture you need to have good humidity levels in the middle atmosphere for s storms to really get going and uh the dust helps keep the air dry and uh yeah, and then, you know, like I said, you know, you add that on top of our negative MJO right now, then the chances for any tropical development are almost zilch. But remember how I was saying these things change a lot? So, you know, we could be in a little, you know, toward the end of July here, we, we could be back in a little positive stage again. That's kind of why we're seeing these models picking up on some tropical juice here. In the, so, you know, first part of July, it's possible, you know, we could be seeing some storm activity because, the A, we're seeing it. <laughs> and B, the, the MJO is going to help support it. Then we could have another lull middle July. But so yeah, short term. You know, again, I, I think long range tropics lovers <laughs> that like to look at long range stuff. The first part of July, you know, we could definitely. Ooh, there's a map I wanted to show the heat. So what else is cooking? Um. So yeah, we got rains coming, you know, Texas, you got a double whammy coming. That's pretty much the big news. We got a high pressure in the south that's going to really reduce uh, rain chances um, for the week. Uh, you you kind of, let's take a look at some five-day rain maps. Um, so, you know, five-day rain map coverage, Florida is almost dry. That's dry for Florida. So five day range, you can see who's getting all the action. Um, but Florida's going to be, we're going to have a high pressure system locked over. So, you know, rain chances this weekend look very slim Florida wise. So if you got any outdoor plans, it's just going to be extremely hot. Um, hey, what's up, Judith? NYS at New York, New York State. I don't think it's going to make it that high. It's definitely going to make it into Arkansas over Saturday, Sunday, Central. Gulf region. Yeah, heat index is a crazy. Um, you know, we were looking at some triple digit, triple digit temperatures possibly uh, across the south this weekend for sure. Um, Texas is always hot. We know that. Actually, yesterday, you know, and let me tell you what, we showed that incredible heat in Texas yesterday, and that definitely contributes to this blob. You know, heat creates storms. That's why we saw that intense storms in the east coast of Florida yesterday. Just so, just because the coverage is not as widespread with these these storms, as hot as things are, they're gonna they're, they definitely explode uh, more. And that's just the summertime pattern that we're in. Here's your two day. All right, so here's the heat. Oh man, this isn't the one I wanted. Why didn't it even load yet? What's up with that? All right. So here's your heat, and all right. So this is Thursday. All right, so cool map here. All right, so here's the front coming in tomorrow. Look at that. You can see the cooler cooler air. So this is tomorrow's front. This is Wednesday. This is that draping front tomorrow. That's why we're going to have a storm possible across the upper Gulf in the East Coast. But after that front dissolves, high pressure is going to build in. So we got upper 90s for Thursday already across I-4, 98, 97. Remember, Tampa's never had a 100-degree day ever. But we're, they're, you know, they're showing 97, 98 on Thursday. Going into uh, Friday, we could be looking at triple digits here on Saturday for Georgia, South Carolina, even, you know, anything white is upper 90s, close to 100. So this weekend, hot, 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 97 here, middle Florida. Um, 
we got upper 90s all the way to South Carolina. So, that, you know, it's going to be a hot weekend. High pressure comes in, and it's going to be hot. I'm telling you, hot, hot. We've got hundreds showing up in Georgia. Yesterday we had some hundreds popping in closer to Jacksonville. we got 99 possible on Sunday here. So the next several days, I'm telling you, it's going to be hot. So if you got any outdoor plans, prepare. <laughs> the heat map. Let's see what the Euro shows. Or the uh, GFS. GFS yesterday, that's the, uh, we'll go to the GFS. It was, eh, it's showing hot too. Here's Friday, 99 degrees. Jacksonville, close to South Jacksonville. So yeah, the GFS is caught up. 101, look at that. Oh my God, the GFS showing 102. 100 degrees in Gainesville. That's a Sunday. Hundreds, look at that. Crazy. So there you go. What else is you guys saying? I'll scroll back up. Hey, Bob, Bill, what's up, buddy? Um, the dust going to hit the panhandle, Jenna? Um, probably for you guys, you'll start to see it maybe Thursday. Um, Thursday, but Friday and Saturday are the, the heaviest concentration. Um, so I was trying to read some comments here. What's up? Uh Sarasota, West Coast, Jordan, what's up? Um, just normal popcorn storms today. It looks like everything today is going to build maybe to your east and push to the west. So I don't know if we're going to have a lot of coverage for storms on the Florida West Coast today. Um, so I'll show you that. Let's look at the southeast. The majority of our viewers but we can look today so right you know rains are today you know louisiana area we got this moisture from the gulf later today coming in already of course we have the rains in texas don't mean to, this map doesn't show up but this is this is um this afternoon and they're going to start seeing this flow come in we got a little blob coming in off you know this is later tonight three o'clock so the storms in florida are going to start popping probably popping a little early for northern north florida that's all tied to this front here that we've been watching uh, but, you know, the rest of Florida, they start popping 3, 4 o'clock like normal, more central, and they push uh, in, in onto the East Coast later this afternoon. So Florida West Coast coverage, not as severe today. But then, we, you know, here, here's that front frontal activity coming in. So we're going to have storms throughout the day and tonight for Upper Gulf. This is 7 p.m. tonight. And then tomorrow – here is the front we got more storms so tomorrow wednesday 9 a.m i'm going to show texas here because we have a second another blob showing tonight for texas for for tomorrow but here here is uh tomorrow morning so we got you know stormy weather across the upper gulf tomorrow morning and then into the panhandle tomorrow noon time ish and then more again tomorrow afternoon for louisiana so and then tomorrow's coverage for storms for Florida, the same thing. Here's 2 o'clock. And uh, anything we get is going to push towards the Florida East Coast. And then high pressure builds back in. Um, and here's, let's take a look at the Texas folks. So here's that, here's what we're watching today. It's going to kind of, you know, it's showing a little dying out later tonight, but look what happens tonight. It's going to reform. It's, uh, this is later tonight. So in, in two to overnight hours, look at that. Same thing that we saw today is going to develop a little bit more to the east and south. This is overnight, midnight. And this is what's going to make its way to Louisiana in the morning. It's actually got a little spinach. Look at that. It's got a little... It's got a little spinach, man. Look at that. It's a, it's, it's a land cane, I'm telling you. The year of the land canes. Look at that. And it's going to, it could be, could be a little nasty across Louisiana in the morning. Look at that. I mean, it's, you know, something to watch. It's noon time. This noon tomorrow. Interesting. Ha. Yeah. So I'm going to keep my eye on that. Let's see what kind of supercell activity we got. Anything. 
showing. Eh, you know, maybe, maybe some storms in the noon time. It's def definitely something to watch morning, noon, tomorrow as we get this coming up. So there you go. Um, what, uh oh, Sandra, what we'll, we'll comment? <laughs> oh, play what? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Alexa, play Kansas Dust in the Wind. Dust in the Wind of Kansas on Amazon Music. You hear it? You hear it? Alexa, up. I can't, I gotta be careful though. Facebook will flag me for copyright. <laughs> Alexa, stop. <laughs> I'll tell you, we're living in the Jetsons, right? Remember the Jetsons? We have talking cars that come and get you. We have uh, computers that think for us. <laughs> um, that was what in the fifties, sixties? I don't know. <laughs> everything, everything that, everything in the future happens. We have car, we have drones that fly. We have shoes that. That tie themselves, <laughs> hoverboards. There's the Jetsons. Remember this? I used to watch this every morning, or not every morning. <laughs> Flying cars, look at that. They were living in a bubble. <laughs> Good times all right so that's it for weather let's see um not a lot man we got you know let's look we'll zoom in a little bit more to this uh now that we got some sunshine we can see what it looks like here and that was kind of a surprise little pop-up system last night let's see what it looks like with daylight oh we're still getting some some growing thunderstorms so that's a sign that this thing's, look at those things firing up, man. Heavy storms. Still. And we have no dry air in the atmosphere. It's all, all juicy. Lots of precipital water out there. Here's a. I are slowly, nah, it's still firing up pretty good. You know, so this stuff's slowly going to the south. I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of you all were surprised this morning because it really wasn't on any future type radars like yesterday. So it's just heading into San Antonio now. I'm sure you guys are getting tons of rain down there through Austin. We have a secondary one tomorrow forming and it's going to push a little bit more south and east than in Louisiana in the morning. So that's going to be something to watch overnight. You've got mail. And uh, hey, Rosie. Um, I, I'm bad with names, but one of our fans, is, are you talking about our dog or uh, Whitney or Whitney? Um, Hunter. <laughs> Somebody got honey, Hunter's sister. From the same lady that we got Hunter from. So we have a family member in the panhandle that has Hunter's little sister. If that's what you're talking about. Because they, they named her Rosie. So. All right. What else we got? Any more thing I could do? Oh, Rosie the robot. So. Anything else I can ch chat away about? So, again, I'm going to thank you, Becky. She sent me some nice collars for the dogs. I'll put them on. We'll show them tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> Whitney, I got mail. <laughs> I still have an AOL email. Who, who can say that? What is up here? Airport delay thing isn't working. At least the Bay News 9 graphics are back. That's good. Zoom, zoomable radar site's down. I got to find another one. So flood potential, serious. You know, today, tomorrow, we got a lot of rain coming. Lower Texas is tomorrow. So they're, they're, you know, they're, and then, and then the, uh, the hot water, what, 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 the weather's coming. 
Dust is coming. That'll be the that'll be the talk of the town Friday and Saturday for sure. Folks across the upper golf are gonna be experiencing high dust content and respiratory issues probably will be issued maybe. Sometimes, you know, somebody sent me one to Puerto Rico, sent a um, health alert for the air quality. Um, let's see. Here's another one. Oof. So there's current look. So look at that. Yucatan already getting some. So as, as soon as tomorrow... We're going to start seeing it invade the southeast, possibly. The big big stuff's right here now. This is this is the big plume, but there's still a little bit coming up. You see the wind flow? That's kind of the overall. we got this high pressure. So high pressure is going to develop over Florida here. That's what's kind of protecting the Gulf or lower, lower from not getting this big plume, that high pressure right here. So there you go. What's up, Don? You had an air quality in Carolina? Hmm. Interesting. There, here's our little spinner out here. That's a uh, Travel Depression 4. Pretty neat. Here's a. Uh, let's take a look at our upper high. See if we can see it spinning yet. So here's a high that's going to build in over Florida right here. You can already see it being picked up. And that's going to block the southeast from getting a lot of rain this weekend. It's going to create a lot of heat. It's going to push our tropical wave up into Texas later in the week. So the tip of Texas, three-day outlook here for flood potential. You can see it's showing up. You can see it there real good. <laughs> so there's a Thursday. Just five, you know, nothing serious, but. A plume of tropical moisture. Whew, man, I'm glad I got back up now because I was talking about tropical. I had a couple people challenge that assessment. Remember we showed the water precipital map? So anyway, it is tropical moisture. Officially, the drunk donkey did not tell you that. Now it is definitely tropical moisture coming up interesting <laughs> plume is a new word Don yes plume so what was it earlier what was it over winter winter it was uh, crap scrap or I don't know remember it wasn't officially snow I, we learned new words so this the year this is the year of words now so the, the they look at this they're even taught they're even calling it the, the tropical they're saying the, a plume of tropical moisture. What the hell is a plume? <laughs> plume. Say that 10 times in a row and you're, you'll, you'll wonder. I keep thinking plum. Plume is a long, soft feather used by a bird. <laughs> plume. All right. Verb. Spread out in a shape resembling a feather. That's interesting. So using it, using it as a verb, it has it, it's supposed to represent a feather or a feel of great sense of self-satisfaction about something. She plumed herself on being a cosmopolitan. Smoke plumed from the chimney. So it's supposed to be it's supposed to resemble a feather. Oh, here we go. A noun. Here we go. A mass of material typically a pollutant also could be a column of hot magma rising from mantle it's also part of an animal's body that resembles a feather so i don't know how did we start using the word plume now all of a sudden <laughs> it's funny so hey check this out all right so another cool thing i'm hoping i'm hoping remember we did a uh we did a drunk donkey live from um, Tampa Bay Brewing Company. So, anyway, hopefully, they are considering making our beer that 
that can be sold and distributed across anywhere. So use the power of good wishes and make it happen that we might have our own drunk donkey official beer of hurricane season distributed through Tampa Bay Brewing Company. Um, so anyway, hopefully David and them, them uh, make it happen. So that would be so cool to be able to buy a hurricane beer from your local Publix. So anyway, that's what's new. So what's Katie? Yeah, yeah, we're you know we're kind of bored right now. There's not a lot of uh, weather to talk about, so I, I keep these things going. <laughs> um, but there's always something to talk about weather-wise, right? Let's see if everybody's talking about our blob on Twitter. Um, brutally hot for Tampa coming. It's gonna be hot. We got we got uh, softball. This weekend. Somebody asked how we did. They did great, by the way. They won our tournament. Emily did great. I was proud of her. She had a pitch a third game, and uh, it was uh, hot. She she did it, but it was hot. Um, but here's, here's Texas flood potential for today. They, they have the storm threat increase now into Houston. So that line that we... That line that we just saw blowing up still is, is definitely um, not dying out. And uh, you can see these thunderstorms are still firing away as they move kind of south. And we're going to have a secondary one tomorrow. So we're going to have the attack of the uh, blobs. <laughs> Double blobbage coming. One today, one tomorrow. Um... All right, back to back to Twitter here. We can. <laughs> Ed Petrowski, he's a storm chaser. He said it looks like a bowl of fruity pebbles in the Eastern Caribbean, or <laughs> how do you look at that and say Eastern Caribbean in the Pacific? <laughs> oh, look at that, Mama Bear. Got a little baby bear. Oh, help, 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 help. Oh, gonna go get her. Baby, baby bear's stuck. Oh, look at Mama Bear. Mama Bear, oh God, I started, I jumped. <laughs> He's like, get the hell away from my kid. That's funny. <clears throat> Here's a picture of Dustin. Oh, this is a good shot. This is, um. so this is posted by Jonathan. I think he works at Weather Channel. But um, somebody showing the actual dust on their finger in Puerto Rico. So, that, you know, it does, it does get on everything. It's a mess. Cars, yuck. Coming to Texas. Don't wash your car if you live in Texas or Louisiana. And uh, there's, there's, <laughs> everything's bigger in Texas. That was 32 minutes ago. Here's the heat index for some here in Florida. 100. Obviously, it's everywhere, but there's 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. Hunter. <laughs> um, yep, yeah, there's that. So, yeah, we got a little weather to talk about. We lost six seconds of daylight yesterday, Bay News 9. We're going to be losing, by the end of the month, we're going to lose 20 seconds a day. So, cherish every second of sunshine. Because now, we'll be losing 20 seconds of sunshine a day. And, and that's depressing. I love sunshine. All right. Hey, look at that dog. <laughs> Crazy. There's our buddy Sam Champion. He, he's a fan of the site. He retweets me sometimes. Which is cool. All right. Well, I rambled on enough. Anything else cooking? Hey, what's up, uh, Bobby? Hurricane. Let's, let's look at Bobby's site. Up here, Hurricane Harbor. Bobby's site. She's already posted her uh, little blog every day. If you like to read stuff, top of my site, Hurricane Harbor. She has a blog every day, every day, almost day, every day. And uh, she's always got good stuff here. So Saharan dust, the Saharan dust, if it's not directly over you, um, does make nice 
sunsets. However, I have to read everything for that. So, good stuff, Bobby. Uh, get off all of the negative. What's negative? What's negative? What do I do negative? I do negative. What did I do negative? Is that negative? Oh, negative. You talking about on Twitter? <laughs> Uh, all right, yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll show the. Uh... <laughs> Bobby talking about AOL. So it's my joke. I always tell people when when I when when I want to sound professional, I have uh, my G J Boylan email. But but I like to get people's reaction. Oh, we got Sheila. Is Sheila in here? We have um, launch today, four thirty four. Look at that. Oh, today? No, that's Thursday. So we have a launch Thursday, 40% probability of a go. Uh, Terry, air quality. Thank you, Kim. Um, Siesta key. It's, I mean, we're going to definitely going to get dust. We're going to, you're going to see haze. So here's, you know, here's Thursday, 11, 11 PM at night. So. Um, so, you know, tonight, so tomorrow we can start to see, um, there we go, frame by frame. So tomorrow we can start to see, yeah, tomorrow, yeah it's tomorrow it's going to start inching its way into Tampa. I mean, the, the big, big, big stuff still down here, but tomorrow it's going to start getting hazy. As that high pressure comes in Thursday for sure, so hot, hazy, high pressure. H H H H H H H. And let's let's we'll we'll, we'll look at the hunter. Come here, boy. Come here. 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 Who comes first? Who comes first? Oh God, Louis can't even wait. Louis can't even move. He's so tired. All right. So here's somebody's begging this for Don. Um, hey, Jonathan, the dust will be gone by early next week. For sure. Um, hey, what's up there, Beatrice? Hey, how you doing, girl? I know you. Hey, there's goes Sarah. Hi, Sarah. So let's see what else. Um, yeah, Sheila or Shelly, you know, and, it, and apparently the dust. I didn't. I haven't read a lot of research on it, but it does contribute to red tide, apparently. Um, so if you're really curious about the dust. It does affect other things, possibly. Here's Hunter. What do you think, Hunter? So he's got the coolest nose. Look at this. All right, so he's got the ah, big yawn. So he's got two little pink spots. See his nose? Like, got a little guy there, a little guy there. <laughs> I can't wait to see it, you know, get bigger because he's going to have, like, these, like, natural little, little um, piercings almost. <laughs> He's like a little bobblehead. Oh, he jokes me. And he likes, he likes, uh, he likes this. Look at this. This is like the cool, cool look at that. <laughs> See, I'm going to get a whole thing in this. He likes his belly rub. Look at <laughs> He's like, you can fit him in the palm of your hand. <laughs> he's, he's like a little toy. I hate small dogs. <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? <laughs> Oh my God, he's a bad. And we already took him to softball field. I don't know how big he's gonna get. He, uh, Louis, Louis at ten weeks was already five pounds. This little guy, we haven't weighed him, but he's def, he's definitely not. Um, he was two and a half pounds two weeks ago, right? And he's got a little sister that one of our weather fans got. So we're gonna keep in touch with Rosie, right, buddy? And we got the collars we're gonna put on him tomorrow. <laughs> hey Brandon, all right, Virginia, what's up? Um So anyway, all right. Don, yeah, well, so the story of our friendship, I'll tell you. So we we had a border collie, then we had a lab. And we told Emily that in um uh 6th grade, 
first year of middle school that if she got if she got straight A's the whole year, she could pick out a dog. Well, she got straight A's. <laughs> Talk about motivation. And uh, hey, oh, there you go, Becky. Thank you. Yeah, I, I I don't know if you saw me. Thank you. Yeah, but Becky's on there. She she hooked us up. So yeah, I got I got them ready. I just opened the box this morning. The bow ties are cool. The girls the girls opened the box. They're like, oh, so I'm gonna let them put them on tonight. We'll take pictures. So hey, you're welcome, Jennifer. Thanks for coming on board. Um, but uh, so anyway, so Emily would uh, Emily wrote out all these little, you know, all the dogs she wanted. And somehow she started, she wrote all the pros and cons. And well, then I, then I started reading about them. I didn't even know what a French bulldog was. And so when she wanted one, then I saw how much money they were. I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> but we found a really, really nice breeder that, uh, actually isn't in it for the money. So she took care of us. All right, so anyway, that's that. Um, all right, so we'll see what tomorrow brings. I got some weather to report for sure. I got to find uh, – oh, there you go, Bobby. You're, we're talking third person here. All right. So we have Bobby in the chat room. I'm going to Twitter to see what she's saying. <laughs> um, but look, at it's red. That's pretty crazy. It's just crazy to think that the, the, the African – you know, the Saharan Desert, that the dust actually flies across – the Atlantic and uh, and it does choke tropical development convection and you can see it right here look at that so you know main development region usually we, we would see you know a lot of tropical activity here and it does contribute to a drier Atlantic but this is temporary it doesn't last forever it's just like a week so anyway all right so I've posted a bunch today. A lot of people asking about the timing of this thing. So we're, we're going to have a lot of people sharing pictures, I'm sure, in the next few days. Um, and there is a little weather to talk about. So, you know, in, 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 a, in a nutshell, we have this. Let me let me tell you what we got. So we have this big old area still producing storms as an inch of south and east of Texas. We have a draping front that's going to start bubbling. Look at this right here. You can see a little bit of action already starting to brew right here these two are going to kind of combine and we're going to start to see storms later today start inching their way northeastward so tomorrow more of the same but overnight we're going to see more of this blobbage enter possibly eastern texas so this general area here in the next two days is what we're going to be short term weather wise lots of rain possible storms uh, then we have high pressure building in over florida so the rain chances are definitely decreasing for florida thursday on and we're going to have this big dust plume uh, eventually making its way into the uh, Gulf as early as tomorrow with the heavy stuff Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then it actually is going to make its way northward some into uh, lower Gulf states. So that's that's it short term. And then tropics wise, we're looking at uh, end of June, early July, we can start to see some more tropical waves um, down the Caribbean to watch. So there you go. That's pretty good in a nut, nut, nutshell. <laughs> so thanks, everybody. Uh, you know, I can't read. All, I only see four or five comments at a time. Appreciate all the supporters, but also the new people that come in. Um, thank you, Terry, Whitney. Um, thank you, Amanda. Um, so, yeah, hey, Stephanie, we still got the birds. They're quiet today. I got the door shut. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah. So, oh, here's Louie. He, he woke up. All right, we got to end it with Louie. You can't let Louie off the hook. <laughs> blobbage. I, I spell it B L O B B A G E. Blobbage. What do you think, Louie? Hmm? What do you think? <laughs> He's a good boy. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow for sure. And uh, tomorrow's Wednesday, so hump day. <laughs> see you. Thank <laughs> you.